This is the pen roll from Fabazine 4, and as you can see, it uses our marvellous marbled fabrics. So you are going to get two large pieces, and these are kind of reflected. So these will work together. Um, when you lay it up, you'll have those two pieces together. So when you flip it over, you can see it kind of continues the pattern all the way through. So we're going to put these two large bits to the side for the minute because we need to start off with the pocket. The pocket is uh, the shorter piece of three and as you can see it's got that same pattern on it so when you line everything up that pattern will continue all the way through. Now you can have it whichever way up you want. I prefer it this way up because I think that looks like a little bit of an eye and then maybe this bit over here like a, like a nose, maybe a dragon, I don't know. Well you can work that out. So we're going to put these two bits to one side now I've jumped ahead a little bit and I've added the bias binding to the top of here. So you get the bias binding included in the fabazine. All you need to do is take the piece that you get, fold it in half, and then slide the raw edge of this piece of fabric into there and do a straight stitch all the way along the top. I've done mine with a lovely uh, gold thread actually because I just thought it kind of brought out the kind of gold colour that reflects within the pattern itself. Then the next step is to attach the elastic. The elastic is also in your kit. And what you'll do is you'll start off by folding this fabric in half and creating a crease all the way along there. That crease is gonna be your guide. So you always line your elastic up with the top of the crease. You put a few stitches in one end just to hold that in place and to kind of start you off on your sewing. And then you're gonna work your way all the way along to the other end. So. If you're going to use a standard pencil or pen, you want to pop that in. Now remember, you're going to have a quarter inch seam on this side, so you need to kind of mark a quarter inch in. And then, whatever the width of your pencil is, plus about five millimeters, so uh, plus about a quarter of an inch. So that's what you're going to want as, as your spacing. So we've seen that's, that's about the width of our pencil, so the width of the pencil plus half a centimeter. So, from my quarter inch, I'm going to come along the width of my pencil and half a centimetre and mark that onto my fabric. Now before I stitch this down, what I actually need to do is put something smaller than the pencil in just to put a little bit of give into that elastic because if you sew them all completely flat, then when you put all your pens or pencils in, it's going to kind of start to curl everything in for you. And what you want this pen roll to do is when you are um, working with it, you want to be able to lay it open and everything to lay flat. So by just using a little bit of a spacer, I've got a, a crochet hook here. You can use anything from the, the kitchen cupboard, like a skewer or um, something like that, just to put a little bit of a, a gap in there. And then you're going to stitch all the way along, moving, once that's stitched down, move along, yeah centimeter centimeter and a half whatever your, your pencils need or pens need and stitch those all the way along with those little bumps in because those little bumps are what is going to help you keep that flat so i'll go ahead and stitch all these in and i'll see you back in a minute i'm on my last few uh, loops now and i just wanted to show you a couple of things one and um, the excess fabric i'm just rolling up inside the machine there as i'm going um, and I just wanted to show you exactly how I did this. So I found uh, an old paintbrush, which is what I've been using for mine. And I'm sliding the paintbrush in first, shuffling that under the foot, popping the foot down, making sure it's lined up with these little white marks here. These are chalk, so they will just dust off when I'm finished. So I'm lining up my center point of my foot with the chalk line that I've made, and then I'm dropping the needle. I actually start off going backwards on these just because I have found it easier so and it goes slow when it goes backwards so that will do two things that will kind of pin everything in place and give you a little bit more control when you put you're going backwards and then go forwards just to make sure that everything's nice and secure and then I've been adding a little fixed stitch on the end there to make sure that that is all nice and tight because what you'll notice is I haven't cut any of these threads off as I've been going uh, what I'm essentially doing is chaining these along. Let's put one more in. Uh, chaining these along, and then I'll go back and cut all of those once I'm finished. So I'm always making sure that my base fabric is flat, creating the loop in my elastic with the paintbrush, 
and then that little crease which you can probably just about see in the edge of there and that's what I'm lining the top of the elastic up with to make sure whoops make sure that it's all nice and straight so um, I'm at the end now and what I'll do is the same as I did on the beginning I'll you've always got a little bit of extra elastic so um, work your way to the end once you've got all of your little loops in put that final stitch on that edge where you're going to hold everything still in place and then you can cut off that excess and we can also lose that little bit of excess bias binding that we've got on the top there now it's time to assemble the project and as you can see there all those if i tilt it onto the side you might be able to see all those little loops that i've added into there for the pens and um, it actually comes to 32 on here so that's a really nice number for uh, sets because they often come in numbers like that so next step is to assemble it now when we talked in the beginning we did mention that there are a front and a back and the front and the back have um different kind of opposite patterns on so when you put it all together the pattern should match all the way through so what i've done is i've cut a piece uh, just a small piece of felt for the back of here now the reason i've used felt rather than batting is because it's nice and thin and you don't want to add a huge amount of bulk to this project you want it to be fairly kind of nice and, and trim you want to add a little bit of protection for the pens but you don't want it to be hugely bulky so we'll put the batting down first and then that first piece on top of there goes the bit that we've made with all of the pen loops in now this is going to once we're finished create additional pockets along here as well so we don't want to um, uh, do that just yet we want to do that once we've got it together because adding the pockets in at that point will effectively quilt all of these layers together and help everything stay together so once we've got those three layers so the uh, felt or really thin batting the backing layer for the inside the pocket for the inside next we're going to add the tabs to tie it with now uh, the kit comes with a um, twill tape in black which obviously matches but I found this piece of gold thread in my stash so I'm going to switch this in so what you're going to do is pick which end you want to kind of uh, tie it from and just pop that so you've got a, a loop at the side there. Let me just shift it along so you can see. Little loop there and then ideally pin that in place. The tape will pin but with this being a cord and a little bit thinner just a little bit of masking tape or tape that's going to stop it kind of springing back like that will be plenty. So that goes in place and then finally on the top your own top layer which finishes the sandwich and then we're going to stitch all the way around the outside now with this having a pocket on and that extra layer at the bottom here i would recommend leaving your gap up at the top where there's only two layers it's going to be much easier to sew later on so i'll add a double pin whoops maybe not because i've just thrown my pins away i'll add a double pin there and the double pin for me just reminds me I, I need to stop now because it's very, very easy on this type of project to sew all the way around, completely forget about the gap that you've got to leave and um, completely miss it out. So I'll just put a couple of double pins in there and finish pinning the rest of it and whiz all the way around on the machine. All done with the sewing machine now. So I've gone all the way around this outside edge and you can see my double pin there either side to remind me not to go too far um, and then the last job to do is just double clip these corners and by double clip that's one off one side one off the other just to reduce the bulk right in that corner as you turn it right side out because if I fold both of those bits over you see a lot less bulk in that corner you can also trim off any excess batting that you've got as well because that will all help reduce the bulk when we turn it right side out so everything is turned right side out I've just pressed these in place with their quarter inch seam allowance and next step is to top stitch all the way around this edge and that will just flatten that out and hold everything in place but if I was to fill this with pencils and pens right now that's a big chunky one that one there we go put in and um, what would happen is as soon as I lift it up that will flop forward because there's nothing attaching it all together so before we do that and add all of our pens in, 
didn't really design it for that big fat pen, but never mind. Um, before we go ahead and add all of the pens and things to this, once we've top stitched, then we need to go ahead and add some pockets in so we can make this piece at the back usable pockets. So it doesn't necessarily have to be the same spacing as your uh, pens were. It can be, um, you know, every third or every fourth one or a multiple of different sizes. But what you want to do is add just however you, however many you want or however few you want. Um, but just make sure you think about what you're going to put in them. Maybe if it's going to be scissors. I mean, these are a, this is a small pair of scissors for this because it's a fairly big pocket. But just bear in mind what you're going to put in them as to how big you need them to be. Um, so I'm going to go ahead, sew some of those in, top stitch that top, and then I'll come back and show you the final piece. Okie dokie, we are all done. So um, I've top stitched all around the edge and put pockets in here. Now, as we're going to roll this up, one thing I should point out, my smaller pockets would have been better off at this side because obviously that's the side you're going to start to roll from. And the bigger things really should be up this end. But what I've done is I've put four smaller pockets, two larger pockets. If I change my mind, I can just stitch up there and um, make those into smaller pockets as well. But you can see how well those fabrics are all set out for you so that absolutely everything matches. And once you've loaded it with all the pens or brushes or whatever it is that you're going to take with you, we will roll it up and then wrap the cords around it and tie it in a little bow so all good to go these are great for glove boxes and things because they're a nice kind of compact size and you can use them for makeup you can use them for your artist brushes anything you like but a really um straightforward project and um, there are some kind of you know technical bits in there with the elastic and things but creates a huge amount of storage in a really small space